afternoon, everyone. We want to get started with the meeting. I want to thank you guys for coming out. We really appreciate you taking the time to come and have a conversation with the community so we can figure out what direction that we're wanting the Florence Douglas to go into. Um, housekeeping real quick, somebody left this envelope full of newspaper clippings here last week, last month. So I don't know who it belongs to, so we're hanging on to it if somebody claims it. Alright, so I want to welcome you and give you a recap of what we did last month. We met last month and we wanted that as an opportunity to hear from the public. We wanted to hear from the pool players who have been shut out from any conversation and we wanted to make sure that we got their messaging and their feelings out so that they had an opportunity to express themselves. Um, it was unfortunate that they were um, put in a light that was negative and it was no fault of their own. So we want to make sure that that is also addressed. When we talked last month, we talked about the things that the group wanted to do and that was to restore accountability and, tra and, and transparency to the Florence Douglas Senior Center. And we also want to add diversity onto the, the decision-making board because we need it to reflect the city of Vallejo so that we have um, communication from the vast communities that we have and what their interests are and what they would like to see for the community center. So in restoring the transparency and the um, um, <laughs> the accountability, I'm sorry, I was running too quick, <laughs> I'll get there. The accountability is because we've tried for months to get information from the senior center, from the board, and from the director. We have so far have failed to do so. They've answered some questions, but it's actually the same rehash of information that they gave before. It doesn't really give us a clear understanding of how things transpire within the senior center. And that's what we're trying to understand. How did we get here? Who's making those decisions? And why those decisions were made? There also was questions about the financial reports that they gave because we have no idea of how the money's coming in, how it's being spent, and um, what the balance is, what the budget is. And so it's really important if you have a senior center that's running on a slim budget that in the past has, has been close to having to close its doors, that we understand what that budgeting process is and that they're following that budget and they're updating that to the membership so that they understand what's going on in the senior center. The one thing I want to make clear is that we are here today not because we're here to make trouble or we're trying to overthrow the floor and stuff the senior center and the people in charge. This situation was thrust upon the community. And so the reaction from the community is why we're here today, it's because we haven't had a chance to really sit down with the board and, and make ourselves um, understand where we're coming from. And so we want people to know we're not trying to be adversarial, it's just that we don't get any reaction from the, from the people that are making the decisions. I, don't, I can't tell you why that happens, but it just makes more suspect on what's actually going on in that center because it should be transparent to all the members involved. So today we're going to move forward with our next steps. We're going to give you some updates. We also have time to hear from the community as well. And then we'll let you know what we're going to be doing from this point on. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, for those of you who may not know, I'm Elissa Shank Stewart, and we did have a, a representative from Pitch In Foundation who was planning to attend this meeting and speak at this point. That person has a family emergency, is not able to be here today. And so I will be speaking from my heart as it relates to this. Many of you sitting in this audience knew C.C. Sabathia from a child playing Little League at North Vallejo. He was kind and compassionate because that's the way his family raised him. He was also a very fierce competitor when it came to sports. Many of you know that. I did not meet Amber until she was in high school. But you know that as a young couple who grew up in Vallejo, 
they probably, through their Pitchin Foundation, have donated more to this community than any other young couple that grew up here in Vallejo. And so, the way I view it, for an item that they donated through their foundation, very expensive item, to be sold for $100 is a slap in the face. We already know that's background history. So a letter was written from the director to the center participants. I don't know how many of you saw it. Maybe you go to the center, maybe you don't. Um, I do know that there was another letter that was sent through the mail for everyone who was a member. And I have to tell you, I was a little upset that my money was used that way, but that's another story. I'm going to read two sentences from this letter and then I will respond. An initial purchase offer was revoked after the table was removed and restored. Instead of the initially planned $100 sale and removal, the pool table was repaired and then through the efforts of the Pitchin Foundation was given as a gift to the Omega Boys and Girls Club in Vallejo. If you didn't know, you might believe that Pitch In paid for it to be restored, and Pitch In paid for it to get moved, and that did not happen. The Pitch In representatives asked Peter to return the table to the center. When he absolutely refused, they said then, that table needs to be retrieved and re-gifted to the Omega Boys and Girls Club, and you need to make that happen. PGN did not make that happen through finances or actually sending someone to get the table. This is kind of what that implied. So I'm saying, this is me talking now, until the table is returned to the senior center, healing cannot begin. I will say it again, until the table is returned to the senior center, healing cannot begin. I will say it for the third time, until the table is returned to the senior center, healing cannot begin. So the next on the agenda was an update for the NAACP. Um, unfortunately, I don't see anyone here representing the NAACP. What we had asked them to do is there was a, a, do, a document that was delivered to Florence Douglas um, as, with some, a list of recommendations on how to move forward with the problems that had come up. That list had been delivered in December, and as far as we know, there's been no response to that list. So hopefully at a future meeting, we're going to have someone from the NAACP here to address that issue. The next part of our um, agenda is a comment section. And so it's going to be open for the public to come up and speak. We want to try to have suggestions on things that you would like to see improvements on with the Florence Douglas, things that you would like to see addressed with the Florence Douglas and how we move together as a community into the uh, future for the Florence Douglas Center. So we're going to ask you to come up. We are videotaping. Um, we're asking that you give your name. If you have a problem with giving your name, that's understandable. You might want to stand with your back to the camera. But we ask that you come up and give your name so we can keep record of who was commenting and then um, um, go ahead and give your comments. So we want to try to keep it short because I don't know how many people are going to speak, so we'll move from this point. Good afternoon and thank all of you for coming. People who know me know I can be a little verbose, so I put it on a three by five card. It's short. Barbara Gaya. I'm sorry to say that first. Can you hear me okay? Barbara Gaya, member of and teacher at the Florence Douglas Senior Center. I'm the one who wrote the letter in early December, blah, 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 copies. And then a recent one saying very creative suggestions, none of which have been responded to. It's okay. You have to almost eat it, I guess, in order for it to work. Okay, um, number one, the pool players. 
just keep remembering, as Alyssa said, because we talk about the table, that it's the players um, and their pain. And I want to remind everybody at the big December meeting I was that we had when Robert Jones came up and was so overcome with hurt and pain and anger that he could not speak. Do not forget that. That's what this is all about, the damage that was caused. That's what I spoke to in my letter. Number two, um, there's a couple of the article today keeps repeating a couple of these same untruths, and I'm going to point a couple of them out because I'm there all the time. I teach for years. Um, number one is there were complaints. Thank you. Keep telling me. <laughs> About two thirds of today's paper. Mr. Wilson stated in the same letter, this is the later letter that's been referred to, to the players that was left on the table with an armed guard instead of talking to them, stated in the same letter that the table disrupted the entire center. <laughs> Unbelievable. I was there a lot and I can say it was joyful noise. That's a biblical quote. I would go in through there with all of my stuff. They would run and let me in the door. Um, apparently, there was um, 25 or more pool players. Um, there's been, for the whole five years, I think going on six years, I've been teaching there, there's been less than five people sitting around, one or two playing the jigsaw table. I went over there this morning, it's the same as usual. The jigsaw table even wasn't there, it was off to the side. There was four people, I think, sitting around and chatting. That's it. So keep that in mind, the other sentence. As the recreation room is used by many members and guests playing dominoes, cards, making puzzles, conversation, reading, and working on projects. I've never seen it. I go through there before and after my class. I'm there other times. Go look for yourself. Um, so, um, oh, and when I saw Joanne Vanderburg out in the parking lot about then, I asked her, were there complaints before? Remember, they've been playing for 22 plus years. No complaints. I don't want to say a name, but there's a person I know, I was in a group with her before, who retired three years ago, started coming and playing jigsaw table, who apparently was unhappy. That's just the last three years. And then Peter came recently. So you make your conclusions. Um, also other people I think have validated that this was not a problem for the 20 plus years before. The last point is that um, Ms. Van der Bergen said at the last meeting, I didn't get a chance to respond, that all this discussion about diversity creates divisiveness. Excuse me, but uh, I believe GBRD staff and many people in the community have complained that there was never this kind of divisiveness until this director came in, who apparently does not have the skills to deal with um, human relations and this recent addition of this one person who's playing jigsaw table. So I repeat my suggestion to put the jigsaw table in the never used conference room with the skylight, put a coffee maker in there and bring the pool table back and restore the former bylaws and add diversity and all the things that it's related. Thank you. I'm a little concerned about the fact that there, I wonder if there's anyone uh, on the board that is here today. And would you identify yourself if you're a, a member of the board? No? Okay. I mean the senior board, the board of directors for the senior. Okay, no. That's too bad. They should be here. It would be really nice to see them here. They were invited. Okay. Uh, my concerns are looking at some of the documentation that has been provided by a number of folks here at the, the desk uh, that I've read don't really clarify where we are as far as their budget is concerned and it doesn't tell us that it uh, that what the information on the paper doesn't really make clear to me what the budget looks like and that's a concern because that's our dollars, us who are new members and those who've been members for years. That's our money as seniors. And so I think that that should be 
we should be allowed to look at that budget and we should be able to see that it's clear. We should also have the opportunity to participate if they're going to make changes in the uh, bylaws and the, and the way that the place is run. Uh, I've asked for, and I know other people have asked for that information, and the only response we got was at the last meeting, and that is if we wanted it, we have to pay for it, but it's still not available. Uh, so that really is a concern to me too. It has to be a concern to all of us, uh, because these kind of things are going to keep happening. Uh, maybe we should shut the bocce ball court down. I don't want to. I want to play bocce ball. I don't want to shut down the pool room. I want to play pool. So that's my expression. And for any of those who don't want to play pool, that's OK. I also would like to play some of the other games that are there. But right now, I don't even feel like going into the senior center because it feels so uncomfortable. It's like I've done something wrong because I've asked questions. So here, my husband and I want to participate at the senior center, and we feel uncomfortable like we're doing, we've done something wrong. All we want is accountability. We want clarification. And if we can't, if they won't give it to us, what are we supposed to do? That's wrong. I'm a senior and proud to be one. And I'm proud to be a member of the Senior Center. But I think all of us should be able to feel comfortable here. My name is Mark Edmonds. I live in North Vallejo, about in American Canyon. I can't drive, so I take Soul Trans bus wherever I go. And I'm a dues-paying member of Flow Center and as of last summer. And I just want to come up here and encourage everybody who may be not a member of Flow Center to please pony up $20 and be a member. Uh, hopefully, I'm counting on the, the way leadership looks is going to look different in a few months. I want to acknowledge uh, the amount of work that's been done. I've only got a small clue as to how much has been done to this point to research what's been going on, to look at old bylaws, to make the contact that have been made with the state, uh, attorney general, on and on and on. I think that is fantastic. Thank you so much. It's, it's great for me to see, I was talking to a younger friend of mine, he says, well, why are these people doing this? Why are they getting involved? I said, well, it's kind of old school. They're community activists. They're upgrading our community, so please keep it up. My name is Frankie Beatrice. My name is Frankie Beatrice Thurston Kelly. I'm Bill Thurston's daughter, if any of you know him. And I decided to come down here because Daddy never would have stood for this. The table is gone. CC Sabathia bought the table. Why wasn't he the one to take it out? I used to come down here to um, do, uh, what do you call it? What's that? Exercise. Not that one, the other one. Stretching and stuff. No, the other one. I'll think of it. No, I'll think of it. Anyway, I come down here and go through the room and the guys were there with the pool table and it was always fun. You know, it was never loud. They were having a good time. There were blacks and whites. Everybody was in there having a good time and now it's gone. And I just wanted to know who took it away. Who, who, who took it away? And why was it taken away? Really, why? 
but there were a lot of people there. Anyway, that's what I have to say about it. Hold on. Good afternoon. My name is Larry Miller. And I am probably the newest member here. I've been a member for 22 hours and four minutes. I just recently moved to Vallejo from Benicia, long ways. And I met Kay and talked to her and she was telling me about what was going on at the senior center. And I just find it rather appalling that people are doing things in the interest of themselves, it appears, and not for the seniors. I'm in healthcare and hospice work, so I work with seniors all the time. And it seems to me that a lot of times people believe that we as seniors aren't going to speak up. That's, that we can do what we want to do and there's no way that they can get back at us or whatever. But it's not the idea of getting back at someone. It's the idea of what I understand that this board here is doing is gathering information, gathering the real facts, and what we need to do is present that to, actually, I'm sure there's more members in this organization than we have here. And I don't know whether you can actually get a mailing list. No? Denied? Well, there ought to be some way that we can actually contact all the members and give them all the facts and let the people decide what they want in their center and not what a few people want. Thank you. I'm not used to microphones. My name is Phyllis Fish. Eat it? Oh, I don't think I'd like it. <laughs> but I've been a member of the Senior Center since 99, and I've not seen the kind of thing happen that is happening now. And I talked to Peter about the pool table as soon as it was taken out, and he flatly told me it's not coming back. And I talked to a board member of the station, it's not coming back. And I say, Peter Wilson needs to go, and the whole board needs to go, and we need to take over. It's Larry Miller again. I, just, I forgot one thing that I wanted to say. Yesterday, when I went to sign up, I stood at the at the office there, there was no one there. Several people walked by me, nobody said anything. Finally this guy came in, he said, I'll help you in a minute. And so he, I said, I want to become a member. He said, okay, he gave me the form, took my money. And I said, right away, who are you? Oh, I'm Peter Wilson, the executive director. And that was it. This was my welcome. He didn't even... I don't even know what's in that building. All I know is where the office is. And he, there was no one going to show me around or anything. So this is a lot more welcome than what I got over there. Thank you, Leah. 
I have, well, let me introduce myself first. My name's Ray Martin. The reason the apron's on is because I'm actually over at the senior center right now cooking 100 pounds of corned beef for tomorrow night's dinner. But, but uh, a, little, a little history because I was the president of the Senior Citizens Council for 2010, 11, 12, and 13. Unfortunately, I resigned uh, January 1st of 2014 because I was getting ready, ready to, to move to uh, Hawaii part-time, so I knew I wouldn't do as good a job as president. Uh, and I feel a little bit sad and apologetic that I should have stayed around for one more year, but I was letting my personal thing going to Hawaii take, uh, take precedent. But what I'm here today for is if you have any questions of me, again, I was president 2010, 11, 12, 13. This is my notebook, which I haven't taken anything out of, so I can leave it for the rest of the day while I run back and forth. But if you have any questions in regards to what happened uh, June 11th, I believe it was, of 2010, uh, 12, when the bylaws were changed, I have the, my notes and the minutes of the, ch of the changes. Um, and going back history-wise, too, I was actually the liaison while I was on city council with Joanne Shively and, and uh, Foster Hicks, Glory X Line. I was the senior center liaison from the, the city council and then also have been a member since like 85. So this is like 30 years I've been a member. But as this goes on, what I'd like to do is if you need any questions answered to me, either if you can write them, get them to me, I'm going to run back to the senior center and check the meet and then come back. But if you have any questions, if you let everybody up here know, and I want to thank Kay for inviting me even though I didn't make the last meeting. But essentially that's just to give an update, but I was, have been, I was also just for one short month the interim director when uh, Vicki Conrad retired and before Peter came on. So I was there for just about a month to, to fill the spot, the space. So that's about it. Oh. I don't have copies, but I have my whole binder here. So I mean, like I said, I'm going to leave this through the meeting and you're going to see a lot of scribbling of my notes and whatever, but I kind of put the 2012 stuff in the front. So. I, no, the, the question that was asked earlier, I have no idea why they couldn't get a, a, a copy of the list of members. there are some conflicting statements. It also says that you have to be a member to vote. And they're supposed to vote in June. But if they don't have a list, if we don't have a list of who's eligible to vote, how do we know who can vote? I mean, that's... Pardon? I'm sorry. <laughs> I know he was in a hurry, so I just wanted to ask him so when he came back he could answer. What I saw in the bylaws is that there are several conflicting statements. That it also says that if people cannot afford the $20, that they will waive the fee. But there's no criteria set up for doing that. I want to encourage everybody to go out and get their neighbors and friends to join so that they will be eligible to vote in the June meeting. That's how you're going to take over the board and the, the uh, institution, the community the center. Also, it says that you have to be a member to vote. But if we can't have a list of who is a member, how do we know who votes is legitimately voting? I think that's a lot of questions that need to go to the state of California as a, because they are a nonprofit and the Attorney General. Thank you. I'll look into seeing if I can get a list of, of the members, because since I'm a dues-paying member too, and one thing about the Board of Directors, the, the retired or past Executive Director in 2012 came to the Board, which essentially is the same Board it is now, except I was President at the time, and said that they were having trouble, the nominating committee and, and 
her as executive director were having tr uh, trouble finding people that wanted to be on the board, and that's why that one instance was deleted in June of 2012, was that we couldn't find anybody to be on the board. So thinking what's happened in the last six months or whatever, I'm thinking you're not going to have any problem now of finding bodies that want to be on the board. Just, let, me just, let me just quick, make a quick comment to what he just said. Just, just a quick comment. The net was not thrown out widely enough to ask people who wanted to participate on the board and who wanted to be involved in the Senate. The net was like, why does my face? So that's why I know they couldn't find anybody. The net was not thrown out widely enough. Hello, I'm Jeannie King. I'm a member of the Senior Center. Normally I'm very shy, but I'm so upset by this meeting that I took my cane and it came up. Okay, the new director may be going through some growing pains. Perhaps he didn't do things as well as he should have. He has apologized in the membership newspaper. I'm very upset by some of the things I hear today about outing him and getting rid of the board. My understanding is that there were a group of people using the pool, the new pool table that were very disruptive. I want you to hear me out. I've sat here and heard you out, and I would like the respect to be heard out whether you agree with me or not. Thank you. So it's my understanding. You can mouth as much as you want, lady. Let's not make it personal. Just let hear me out. It's my turn to speak. And if you stop mouthing me, I'll be able to speak shorter and get off the floor. Thank you. Now, I think it's really unfair to the new director about wanting to oust him and the board. That's all I have to say. And I'm very upset by such thoughts and comments. Okay, do we have any more questions for Mr. Martin or are we Ted? Yeah, he's gonna have to go back to cook and so we wanna catch him very, very quickly. No, because when I was president, we had two meetings, January and June. So there were two semi-annual meetings. Right. Okay, I have my notebook here if you want to go through it and see, because I presided over the January and the June meetings while I was president. So there were two semi-annual meetings in January and June of each year. Yes, so actually we, we requested it and I even got food to try to draw people in because we could we could bring people in with food. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of something. The board meetings are not... Oh, okay. Her question was, were the board meetings open to the public? No, the board meetings weren't, but the semi-annual meetings were. The ones in June and... and uh, January and June were. Yeah. 
There was an agenda, and I have agendas in here for 10, 11, 12, and 13 if you want to look at the agenda. Nobody ever asked to, to come to us. So, okay. Sorry. Question? As far as I know, it was, yeah. Right. There, was a, there is a bulletin board right outside the main room. We have been asking since January for the orders, and we have had zero response. I'm going to run across to, to check the situation with the meat, but I'm going to leave this book, and I'll come back, because I don't know how long you're going to be here. But I'll be back, hopefully, in about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, we do thank Mr. Martin for coming over and participating. We, we appreciate you being here. Hi, uh, my name is Cindy and I'm with uh, Justice for Mario Romero. Um, I just want to thank you guys for inviting us to sit in and find out information about what's going on. Um, you know, I, it's very heartbreaking that, you know, you live your life and you, you pay your dues and you expect, you know, for things to go they're the way they're supposed to go. Um, and injustices like this, you know, it's very disappointing. Um, I just want to encourage you guys to, you know, continue the fight, to let you guys know that we stand in solidarity with you guys. We'd like to organize with you guys, uh, come up with some ideas to what, where we can make some noise so that we can put some fire up under, you know, the butts of these people that are, that are, you know, causing, you know, such heartbreak in this community. Uh, so um, I'd like to be in contact with you guys uh, so that, you know, we can get together and organize. And I just, you know, I just want to encourage you guys to keep up the fight and let you guys know that we stand with you guys. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Gordon Eaton, and I am one of the pool players. And I didn't know, two more people came in, there was one back there with me. So I just wanted to let you know that there is representation from the pool players here. I'm not going to go through all of the things that we've talked about before, what happened, but I will say that I somehow can't understand, because we're getting discouraged. It's been quite a long time for us, the way we see it. And I've been to two meetings over there, I've been to the second meeting here, been to a round table meeting at the other center and all I'm saying is there's a lot of talk and I understand the process is a long process but it didn't take them but a weekend to take the table away. And it's kind of discouraging for us as pool players we come and we want to support and want to do this but it doesn't seem like there's anything happening. And I'm kind of really discouraged that we are as a community of senior citizens we allow four people to control what's going on at that center without basically having any say so we as a group of senior citizens that belong to the center should be able to say we want to hold a special meeting and that's just all it is to it whether the bylaws say that or not if you read into the bylaws anything that that board does that the, how does we phrase it, the committee or the, the council, which is the members, does not approve of, we can reject that. And how do you reject that if we have to wait for six months? We should be able to call a special meeting anytime we want to. And there's a lot of things going on and there's a major disruption, but we have to sit back and wait until what, June? I don't really think so. I think that there should be someone looking into the provision, or we just call the special meeting ourselves and say we represent the seniors at the Vallejo uh, Florence Douglas Center. So anyway, it's just, uh, this is what I'm saying, it's kind of discouraging to go along and we still have to wait. We've been waiting since December. I've been attending all the meetings and I've been asking, how do I get an application for the board? How do you get membership roles? 
none of this is available to him. But yet and still, we keep going along. I'm not sure where the end is. Can you hear me now? My name is Michael McGriff. McGriff. The spelling is the same as that young lady right there. Um, we have lived in this town since 1951. And I say, shame on us, Vallejo. Shame on us, Vallejo, that we are having this kind of conversation. You can hear me now again? There is no reason that we as senior citizens shouldn't be able to know what's going on in our center. Decisions should not be made without the member's approval. I am a member. I've come to three or four meetings, and the more meetings that I come to, the more confused I am, the more what looks like to me to be stuff that's going on that they don't want us to know as seniors. I'd say we should support Great power. Great power. You hear what I'm saying? We need to support ourselves. It's getting messier and messier. The, the lady, I forget her name, who was just up, who is my cane mate. You're absolutely right. We shouldn't, Mr. Wilson should be here to defend himself. If there are members here who are saying, look, we don't feel he is competent enough to run this center, then he should be able to defend that. What has transpired since November, December, should not be supported by us, can't be supported by us, without our input. We call ourselves, we, we, we attempt to put up in bright lights in the paper how diverse a city we are. It's a shame we don't celebrate our diversity. We talk the game, we don't walk the walk. We run off into our own little areas, do our own little things, and when things are questioned, the powers that be say, you can't do that. If this mess has gotten to this point, my question is, what do we do about that? I know that's on the agenda, but are we at, the, at, at a place yet where a grand jury needs to look into this stuff? Are we at the place yet where we need legal assistance with this? I'm hoping that this is not reflective of the Lale City government. I'm hoping that this is not systemic. But let's, if we can, take this opportunity to make good on our promise as a city to treat each of our citizens with equal respect and love for this city. Thank you very much. And I just want to make one clarification, and I'm being presumptuous to speak for the group, but we didn't come together to overthrow Florence Douglas. 
we came together to try to add transparency and try to understand what was going on with the center. It's only because we've been met with no response that we're at the place that we're at now. Had the board been more responsive, had the director been more responsive, had they provided the information that we requested, we wouldn't have to be here now. And it's through that frustration that we're here now. So the members of the public that have their own opinion about what should happen to the board, what should happen to the director, those are their opinions. And so we are only trying to gather information to find out what we can do to improve the situation that's there now. The board can remain if they're open to change. The board can remain if they're open to transparency and accountability. The board can remain if they're open to adding diversity and listening to the community and trying to resolve this problem. That's not the issue. If Peter wants to sit down and he wants to talk with the community, he's welcome to do so. We haven't been able to get him to do that. So this is why we're here today meeting. We tried to get the meeting to be held at the senior center. We were told no. They told us if members wanted to sit and talk, we would have to pay for the space. So that's why we're here today. Hi, you guys. I'm, I'm James Little. One of the pool players volunteer with the center. But my name is James Little. One of the volunteers here, pool players. One of the guys that don't understand what's going on, too. Uh, me, myself, I'm in the same boat with the rest of us. We have meetings. We have meetings. I'm the one. I was the first one that even said anything about what was wrong to anybody to get these meetings. Because I'm a young senior. I didn't feel what was done was right. I know what's right from wrong. I know what it feel like to be done wrong. So it was done wrong to me as inside my heart to where I wasn't going away. I mean, I just got to be a senior. I played baseball for Mayor Douglas at 15 years old over here for, for Babe Ruth. I met her, I shook her hand. I was, you know, for me to be able to come into the center, I never came into the senior center, center, center until I was a senior because I was expected that. Then to come into the center and have a director that was at the center first that took us in as, you know, each and every one of us as who we were or whatever, I thought it was fair. The other, then the other director came, you know, and the center welcomed him in. I thought he would be fair too, you know, and we would talk to him like the other one, but he didn't talk to us, never. Not from the word go. I, saw, I mean, I'm a good guy. I know when someone's not talking to us and don't like us, but never talked to us. I went over to him as a volunteer because I felt like I could talk to anybody in the center, and I had my own meeting with him. And I asked him to do a couple of things with me because I knew he wasn't going to get along with the rest of the guys. I couldn't communicate with him. I asked him, can I be the, the communicator? We'll work it out. Whatever you didn't like, you could talk to me, and I'll tell them. I'll keep it right. He told me what the city never did. That was in November. It's now in uh, March here. A lot of the pool players, they, they don't want to come to these meetings no more. I call them. I'm the one that calls them all. And then I call them last night. They don't want to come. They're getting, having things to do, and they're getting, they're getting done with this. Because I feel like the center, the people who did it, that was their design to do, was to take the table away, and we would go away. And I don't want to go away. They need to bring it back. You know, we're not like little kids. Take it away. Just bring it back. And let's, you know, let's set some rules around it. If you're not right with it, if you're not right with it, set some rules around it. But bring it back. It was here. It should be here. And let's deal with everything, one thing at a time. We took the table. Let's get the table back. And then anything else that we don't feel right with us as pool players, we'll support you guys too. But let's support us as pool players first. And let's get that table back because it's a long time. We all got our own sticks and we don't, we don't have anywhere else to shoot. They told us to go to the kids' place and shoot. We know what's up over there. We could get deemed from some kids, say we mess with them. You know, uh, we don't have business plan with kids. You know, they want us to go everywhere except where that table was at. So we need you guys to help us out. Get the, get the table back. We all grown. If something happened, we can get us a little rule and let's do it, you know, for real.
good afternoon. My name is L. Louise Quinn, and I've been a resident of Leo uh, for some time. Oh, so nice. Okay, uh, I don't have anybody to plain to, uh, to, but I am concerned about the senior citizens by plain food because all my life I've been taking care of senior citizens stuff. And like I was telling some of my kids and stuff too, uh, the, senior, the men have been working all their lives and support the wife and all the kids. They don't want to take no go to no jazz class and no day, day class. But uh, a suggestion that I had, I've been thinking about it, that we pay for jazz exercise, we pay for line dancing. Why they can't put the food back in here and pay to get an instructor? Get an instructor, pay them, and let the uh, senior civil go ahead on and have it. And so, uh, like I said, I'm really concerned, and I think it needs to be back here. And I haven't talked to Peter anything about it, but I think it needs to be put back there. And another thing he can do, he can be uh, our base. He can be our base because we, in my mind, things last one hour. My jazz has a class one hour, but we sharing it with two or three different organizations. And I think the same thing can be here by that pool table. Just a couple of quick follow-ups. I want to thank um, the Times Herald for being here. John, and for Mark Garden, when you see him, thank him for coming and setting up. Uh, I have a response, um, although I'm walking on thin ice here because I teach at the um, Senior Center, but this is worth stating. It's fairly common knowledge, and you can ask um, the current director of the Humane Society that these are long problems that have been going on for quite a while, problems dealing with people. Peter Wilson is a very good fundraiser, it appears. This is wonderful, but that's what he should be doing. If people say, oh, this is not about race, well, <laughs> then why weren't any of them talked to instead of a piece of paper was left on the table and an armed guard there? That's not racist, I don't know what is. And it's the constant half truths and the story keeps changing. You can ask people like Leah and Kay especially, I want to thank Kay, she has done this like a full-time job, but the rest of them like a half-time job. She has two to three meetings a day. You need to understand, we have to all stand up and account her. She goes to Fairfield, she goes to Berkeley. She's talked to two lawyers. Some of us have talked to two lawyers in the last week. There's been a lot of major developments supporting us. So ask, if you have any questions, ask them. They have mountains. She's got whole rooms, several in her house, covered with all the papers about this. It just is amazing. And that's mentioned in the Facebook page. Um, so, but the, the pattern has been lies and half-truths and continually changing the story and an attitude of dismissiveness and arrogance. And I don't say that easily because I don't, I like to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. So let them do fundraising, but we need somebody who can work with the whole diversity that is Vallejo. And no one's so much bad mouthing the board as they are, we need to restore a functioning board. A board, if you look at any other nonprofit, oversees, hires, fires, and supervises the executive directory. What's happened with these recent bylaws, and Kay is really the expert, and Leah is the expert on these kind of things, but to, ha to be a, now a voting member of just these, these four offices that meet secretly, and apparently since he's brought in all this money, he, now they just do, do whatever he wants, that is not a functioning board, a supervising board. So keep really clear on that, and we need to restore, as the flyer says, a fully functioning eight-member board, and those four members we need to bring back need to reflect our wonderful diversity. Um, and remember, I know these things take along and they're very, very frustrating, but keep remembering Susan B. Anthony never saw women got the right to vote. This will not take that long. <laughs> things are moving very fast. Um, but keep the pressure on when you join, if you haven't already, say you're joining to restore the former board and its function. Because um, then I'm sure the current director will take credit for the vast number of rules of numbers. And remember, it's on your agenda, but just in case you haven't seen it, be at the city council meeting this coming Tuesday. Yeah, so tell them about the city council meeting Tuesday, and thank you again for coming, and, and thank the supporters.
My name is David Gonzalez, and I wanted to uh, comment a little bit about what Michael, or reiterate what Michael was saying, or, or support it. Uh, because be careful what you ask for. Because once you get it, you better back it up. Because if you don't back it up, you just talk. You gotta walk that walk. Now I sit on a various boards here in Vallejo. I became active after living here 11 years. I'm now a 14 year resident of Vallejo. Uh, originally from San Francisco and seen a lot of things in my years politics and boards and organizations and disruption I've seen things work and I've seen things not work well R right now it's not working well uh, there's not the representation that's necessary uh, on some of the organizations that I'm on the board with if they were to function like this one is malfunctioning I wouldn't be sitting there long and that organization should get rid of anything that is not supporting their uh, original intent and their goals. So uh, what I'd like to see, and for what I've seen, witnessed so far, is yes, uh, Peter is very successful at bringing money in, but since when is a 50-year-old a senior? One thing, okay? Another is that if there are decisions to be made, it has to be shared. There ha everyone has to have a say in it. In, in my experiences, everyone needs to have a say in it. Not just four people or five people. Everyone. It's a senior, Florence Douglas Senior Center. All the memberships, by be paying our dues, we have a right. We have a say. And we should have a right. And we should have a say. And one of the things in the decision that was such as made for um, on the pool tables, and that's just symbolic of what is not what is malfunctioning currently, but decisions like that should not be arrived at by four or five people, period, bottom line. So there need to be changes made here, and then changes made with all of you, because once you start taking this over, and once changes are in, in the works, you have to continue to come and support it. You can't just throw your arms up in frustration. We've lived this long. Let's continue to live right and continue to make changes that are necessary. We've seen a lot of changes in our lives. Not all good, but the things that we saw come slowly and to our to this fruition, fruition rather, were worth the time and the effort. So this is no less uh, an effort. This is our organization. And we have to meet here. We should be in the other building. What the hell is that all about? Okay, that's wrong. So take it back. Let's do it right. And let's follow the, the leadership these uh, women here are, are showing and all the time they're putting in and committing to this effort. Let's support them. On to the next part of the agenda, which is an update. We're going to have Ms. Lavelle come up. Dr. Lavelle. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming along. Well, I have, I'm living in a flood of paper, and so there's no point in trying to bring all of that in front of you. But I first became, I joined the Senior Center in June 2014 because I read that there was a new appointee. I went along to that meeting knowing nothing about its organization. That, it turned out, should have been the annual general meeting of the Florence, of the Vallejo Senior Citizens Council which is the 501c3 that runs the Vallejo, the, uh, the Florence Douglas Senior Center. The present leadership tries to keep that a secret, that if you take out a membership of the Florence Douglas Senior Center, that makes you a voting member of the 501c3 known as the Vallejo Senior Citizens Council. That council came into operation when the Florence, before the Florence Douglas Senior Center existed. 
and there have been many changes in the bylaw. The major change happened in 2012 in June. Before then, the organization consisted of four meetings a year of the entire council. Four or five members were elected from the entire council to serve for three years as trustees on the executive board that met every month. The finance committee was made up of those four or five trustees plus the treasurer. That is how accountability and transparency were preserved. In addition to the trustees, there were annual elections of officers. Uh, president, first vice president, second vice president, secretary, and treasurer. In June 2012, the bylaws were changed. Our lawyer tells us they were not changed legally, so we plan to be operating from now on under the 2008 bylaws. The 2012 bylaws removed the trustees. They reduced the officers to president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Right now, we have one person who was elected before January 2014. That is Billy Milne. The other officers who were elected all resigned. So the other officers, the secretary, etc., were appointed by Billy Milne. So we have one executive director who was appointed by presumably Ray Martin, who has just left, who was succeeded by Billy Milne. So we have four people, two people actually, are the running the show and they say that they have a membership of 700 people. Well, sure, I call that dictatorship. They don't like that term. Yesterday, I received a, a letter um, from Paul Ligda, the attorney who had met with us early in the day, and Paul Ligda reported that the executive director will not meet with us until we apologize for a poem. So I have replied to him, since he does not seem to understand what a poem is. A poem is not a factual statement. It is a fiction. You do not apologize for composing a song or making a poem. Saga of Vallejo, Paul Tablegate, 2014-2015 is a poem in progress. It is made of fiction and draws on documentary sources. It keeps growing day by day. We're up to 18 pages right now and I'll take orders for it. It can also be read online. In the old days, dictators could burn the single copy. Everyone can choose to read or not to read what a poet writes or a singer sings. They are not free to unwrite it. Of course, every dictatorship hates bans poets, starting with Plato's Republic. Peter Wilson said he would not meet with us because he would not feel comfortable until the poet had apologized. Dictators want to feel comfortable at every moment. Poets are not working in the comfort industry. I live with a poet 
the current name of that poet is 2024 Vallejo Summies Dutch Publishing. The legal situation is that special meetings may be called by the president or by a group of 5% of the membership. Now, they are keeping the, the membership numbers a secret, thinking that will prevent the membership from ever holding a special meeting. I think we can prove them to be wrong. We are operating, as I say, on the 2008 bylaws. We will be opening now a nominating committee for the election of trustees at the special meeting that was announced at the end of February. The special meeting will be as stated on Thursday, April 23. We have given more than two months notice. Marina. There was a letter that was sent out today um, that came from the senior board, right? The senior center board. And I read it really quickly before I came over, but it was my understanding that they said there was not going to be an election because the, the members had a two-year term. So there, I, I, I'm not sure. We announced, uh, the, the, as members of the Vallejo Senior Citizens Council, we announced on the flyer at the end of February that there would be two discussions, this is the second, and then there would be a special meeting at which we would restore the bylaws. The, we had two responses from Peter Wilson. The first said, no one is allowed to call a special meeting. So you are misrepresenting the outcome of your two discussions. We have we did not tell them that we are able to read the California Code, which says 5% of the membership, because they will then try to prevent 5% of the membership from assembling petty strategies. This is a letter which was uh, registered and sent to the four of us to my address yesterday, and that says, as you know, the most recent version of the bylaws was adopted by the members of the corporation known as the Council on June 11, 2012. These are the current bylaws that govern our organization and the board is committed to following them. That said, the board is in the process of reviewing the bylaws and will seek input from the members before making a recommendation to the council for approval. I am sure that more questions and ideas will arise as we discuss the bylaws in greater detail. The board plans to convene the bylaws committee to review the bylaws, blah, blah, blah. The age of members, they say that you mentioned in one of your letters that membership was opened up to individuals from age 18 to 49. Please note we have no members in that age group. On the website it says membership and it lists seniors and then it has three listings under future seniors one year, future seniors two years, future seniors three years, they're now being told they're not members. Members, but not members. You correctly point out in your February 12 correspondence that membership is limited to individuals age 50 and older. We have organized future seniors of Vallejo as a fundraising tool to encourage citizens younger than age 50 
to join us as volunteers. We are offering these citizens a discount on the monthly dinner. Then pool table. The board decided to remove the pool table from the center after receiving numerous complaints from members regarding the use of the pool table and the effect that was having on the membership and other activities. The board made this decision carefully and after significant deliberation. Under California law and the bylaws, the board is charged with running the day-to-day -day operations of the center. And the board's decision to remove the pool table fits squarely within this authority. We have disputed that from the beginning. The, even the 2012 bylaws state that the function of the board is advisory and any major decisions need to be approved by the full council. Peter Wilson was appointed in, in April 2014 at the annual general meeting that should have been held in June where he first talked. There should have been proposals to the full council. We want to change the category of membership to introduce future seniors. We want to get rid of the pool table. There should have been voting then on these major decisions. Thank you. Okay, so again, what we're trying to do with this board to get them to recognize is that we're wanting to return to the 2008 bylaws because that's when we have a full board with trustees from the membership. We also want to reinstate the four annual meetings a year because it makes no sense that a board operates and only comes to the meeting six months after the fact and tells you what they've done. So there's no way for you to know or to oppose what they've done in the in, in between because it's too late. By the time you hear about it, it's too late. So it should be that they're proposing information that's going to be done at the following meeting so that you have time to look at it and, and decide for yourself whether it's a good idea and then have say so on it. So we want to make sure that we have four meetings a year. We want the four trustees reinstated and then we want to go back to the 2008 bylaws which includes the, the revisions that we're taking out where they can't have input from the, from the membership. So the last part of this is, is key to where we're moving next and we're going to have Sharon come up and, and give you some information on that. Hello everyone, uh, can you hear me pretty good? Okay, uh, my name is Sharon McGriff Payne, and I have been working with this group since around November, December. Uh, let me first say I want to thank the pool players. Uh, I don't think they have been publicly thanked enough. Um, and I know they're frustrated, we're frustrated. But I want to thank them because of the action that was done the mistreatment of them that was done in December, November, that acted as a canary in the mine. Because we had no idea that there were these kinds of problems at the Florence Douglas Senior Center. And had that not happened, which was terrible in itself, we would never have heard a thing about this. And I think what got me involved, what got everyone else involved was that it was done in such a mean-spirited way. And when they told us to move on, get away, that's when that really fired us up. So I want to thank them, and I know it's, it's taking a while, but we are in this to win it. So um, we, we are not going to step away. So, you know, please understand that it may take a little while because Peter Wilson and the board, and I'm not trying to badmouth anyone, they have dug their heels in, which tells you that's not leadership. 
leadership brings people together and they have done far less than trying to bring our communities together. One of the things that I just discovered is that in the next 25 years, our senior population of seniors over 65 is going to double, not only, I'm sorry, well, 25 years that I read. Okay, let me, let, let, right, right, okay. Barbara, let me, let me finish. In the next 25 years, for sure, that our senior population is going to get, is going to double. Uh, here in Vallejo, uh, our senior population is probably already extremely high. Again, uh, we have a brown, a browning population here, uh, an older uh, population here that really does need more programming. And from what happened over there in November and December tells us they aren't ready. They are not ready for our grain and browning population. So we want to get them ready. We have to get them ready because there will be no programming over there for our seniors if they continue with this bad attitude. And it is a bad attitude. So, um, it, it, you know, they, they could have had this already figured out by now. One of the things that we're going to do coming up is this Tuesday we need each and every one of you to show up at the Blail Senior, Blail City Council, I'm getting all these councils mixed up. We need you at the City Council on Tuesday night. Try to get there early, around 6.30, because we are going to a meeting to ask for a meeting. We're going there to get on the agenda to ask for a study session. One of the biggest frustrations that I've had here is being told by our City Council that they have no jurisdiction over this matter. They, we have talked to so many different people and they continue to tell us, oh, they're not under us. We can't do anything. And my thing is, what part of the Vallejo, Florence Douglas Center, what part of that is not in Vallejo? You know, even if they don't have a legal jurisdiction, they have a moral jurisdiction. You know, they have got to stand up and say something. You know, from everybody we've gone to, to talk to, they've all basically said, well, you know, and it's been this. They don't do that when they want votes. You know, and that's what's making us extremely frustrated. So we need you there on Tuesday night to really encourage the city council to put us on for a study session. So if you could come, please do. There is going to be that um, thing about medical marijuana, so there'll be a lot of people there, so come early. But we think if they can talk about weed, they can talk about us. Okay, so. Okay, so what to wrap up what we've gone to is the city council is going to have it on the agenda to see whether the, they can get a majority vote to put on a study session to talk, have an open discussion about what's going on with the Florence Douglas. And so we need you to have, be there to support, to say you want to see the study session, that you want it on the agenda. We understand that they don't have jurisdiction, but they can have a discussion to talk about what's going on because we want the whole population of Vallejo to look at, the senior population of Vallejo to look at What's going on is so that they get involved as well. We're not, the, we're not saying that we know everything and that we know every, how to take the direction. We want input from the community as well. So we're just saying we just want the council to ask some questions about why these issues are continuing to go at, for five months now and with no resolution. So if you can't go, we ask you to email, there's an email list that's attached, or to call the city manager and send a, a short message to them to say that you support the study session so that they'll have that for council.
So study sessions, um, i sorry, Stephanie Gomes. Um, having, going to the council is great. Um, I think the key is to contact the council members beforehand, flood them with letters and phone calls, ask for them to do it beforehand. Going to a council meeting, having a bunch of people go and speak up, that helps, but the, the work has to happen ahead of time too. So I say do both and, and really make it clear that this has got to happen. That, that they, this, we are, as citizens, we are demanding a study session. They need to work for us. All right, so tell your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, everybody they can attend to please attend. It would be nice to have a, a, a nice show of support. Those people who can't attend, please call or email and do it as soon as you can so that when they get ready for their, their uh, agenda, the agenda item, they'll know how many people have contacted them that they have support for this. All right, so we want to adjourn this meeting. We're going to be meeting again April 23rd. Anything that comes up before then, we'll try to be in contact with you but we we'll encourage everyone to go. The next step is to get city council involved so they at least know what's going on and they can hear from the community. I want to thank Marina Drummer of the Community Foundations, uh, Commun Community Futures Foundation, who generously paid for our rental here today. Thank you, Marina. All right, thank you.